So, um, I like to tell you guys true facts and fun facts about life that maybe you just never knew. Like, for example, there's not very many clouds in the sky yet, but don't worry, there's a cloud factory right over here, and later on today, uh, there will be clouds in the sky. So, thank you, cloud factory. Uh, Thanks. <coughs> sorry, it's a, just like a chemical smell. It's kind of burning my eyes. But thank you. Oh, gosh. This is too... Uh, stop it. Stop it. Oh. Huh. Hey, guys. I hope you had a wonderful Sunday yesterday and that you relaxed a lot because God told us to. So you have permission to just chill and he will take your six days and make it more useful than seven days if you just try to do it your own way. Okay, so <clears throat> it's pretty cold this morning and I gotta say that normally if a police officer yelled at me, freeze, I'd be like this, but that's physically impossible at 98.6 degrees. And he'd be like, just stop moving. I like uh, that I could do but today it's below 68 degrees Fahrenheit which I think you know freezes Texans so <laughs> so if a cop said to me today freeze I'd be like too late I'm already frozen already there buddy yeah all right now today we are gonna paint we tried to paint uh whatever day was Friday but you know what happened the wind came and not just a little bit of wind all the wind it's like I've been storing it up for a year and we blew our wad in a day <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it was unbelievable how much wind there was. But today we we're gonna paint. Now look, probably 68 people yesterday said, "Oh, is that house gonna still stay yellow?" I'm like, "No." Every time I do Hardy, people are like, "What oh, about that's so yellow? Why would you have it yellow?" I'm like, "Because that's how it comes." You know, that's. I'm sorry. That's like saying, "Is that, that sugar gonna stay white?" I'm like, "I don't know." That's how it comes in the package. I guess you melt it and make it into caramel or something. I don't know how this stuff works. But we're gonna paint it. So see the yellow up there? That won't be there. Nope. See the white there? It'll look better because we'll be doing another coat. But we got the black roof on. Uh, Angel and Sylvester are doing a great job and their guys are doing a great job and we're just so grateful for them. They're gonna come, but they're letting the frost die first, which I'm grateful for. Smart. So they're up there and you know, they're like, I feel like we're really pushing the envelope, John. And I'm like, yeah, I do that all the time. And I'm like, but something you need to remember when you're doing that is no matter how far you push the envelope, it will always still be stationary. Think it through. Hmm. Stationary. Stationary. Hmm. <laughs> Pushing. Hmm. Pushing the envelope, but it will still stay stationary. Forever. Oh, because it's stationary. stationary. It's like something oh, you write on. Writing stationary. Now I get it. Don't get it. Nope. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, so I just want to say for the record that some people are like, I love football. And some people are like, I love music. And some people are like, I love when somebody gets swindled or whatever in the world it is that you love. I want to give you a short list of things I love. This is a very short list. I love when people are kind to each other. I love when people show mercy to each other. I love when friendships that have been broken for whatever reason get restitution and they become friends again and they forgive each other. I love that. Like when I hear that story, when I get to be a part of that story, I'm like, oh, you made me so happy. This is better than watching football or whatever you guys do with the sports stuff. Uh, <laughs> so much better. Like I love compassion. I love when somebody sees somebody in need and they go, I want to help you. And they quietly go and help them without having a bunch of fanfare and putting on social media, right? I love that. It makes my heart sing. And I hope that it makes your heart sing too. I was thinking about this at breakfast this morning. Like, I don't know if the reason why I love that is because I love it or because Christ in me loves it. But it's been so long I can't tell the difference anymore and I don't even care. Like Christ lives in me and he's like, I identify with that, I love it, I applaud. I applaud you, sir. Yes. Now, <laughs> there's a picture in Hebrews that uh, the writer of Hebrews, which mm, is debatable, a lot of people think it's Paul. Um, Hebrews, Hebrews, same thing. <laughs> whatever. Um, he's writing to them and he paints this image of a runner running their race, right? That that's what our spiritual life is. That's what our life here is here on earth, that we're running a race. And we need to run it like somebody that wants to win because only one person wins the race. Now, in this case, we all can win the race, but a lot of us choose not to. It's the turtle, usually. Yeah, it's the, the one that stays with it. Okay, so even though we feel like we're just alone and going through the drudgery of life and that what we do doesn't matter and nobody's paying attention, the truth is that if we like removed ourselves and took our spiritual blinders off, because we are spiritually blind, and we looked, 
we'd be in an arena and the crowds would be cheering us on. There's Moses and there's, you know, Abraham and there's David and there's all these, uh, the Paul and all the people that have come before us cheering us on going, you're almost there, buddy, you're almost there. Do the right thing. It matters, it matters, it matters. And cheering you on till the very last second you cross that finish line and you think, nothing I did mattered. And here's, here's what I want, okay? At the end of life, I wanna just walk into a quiet room and Jesus is there and he looks at me and he smiles and he hugs me and he goes, I saw what you did and I'm proud of you. More than anything in the world, like my whole being is just, I want to hear those words. Well done, good and faithful servant, slash friend, slash son. More than anything, I wanna hear that. And then I'd be like, I don't care if anybody else knows except for you and me and the fact that you said that to me is enough forever. Yep. But then he'd be like, I don't have to tell anybody else because, and he'll open up the doors and be like, they already know because you were kind to them. And then there's you guys in heaven with me. And then I'll be like, my heart is full. My heart is full because you guys are here with me and I got to play a part in that. So anyway, we're gonna do some painting. I hope you guys today have mercy and compassion and love and kindness for each other because these are the things that really matter. These are the things that you can take with you. The money and the trash, the garbage, the cars, the houses don't matter. Kindness matters. Love matters. All right, see you guys. Oh, hey guys. It's embarrassing. I'm just sitting here, I was in deep thought. If you're anything like me, you're thinking like, what kind of cool tattoos should I get? And right now I was thinking about tattooing cottage cheese on the back of my legs. Uh, just because I think that would be attractive. I've heard that ugly is in the eye of the beholder uh, or the beer holder. I don't know. Anyway, that's kind of the stuff I think about. I'm sure I'm not unlike you. <clears throat> so today we're painting. Uh, I was talking about superpowers and I want to talk to you about, um, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but let's just say there's somebody that's working on this job and this person has been seriously injured, right? When I make jokes about me being handicapped, it's obviously jokes. My handicaps are more awesomeness than handicaps. Um, but this person was um, hurt very, very badly. And I've seen people hurt much less than he was. And those people were like, I'm disabled, I can't work. And the rest of their lives, they sit and they wait for the government to write them a small check, which if you ask the government to help you, that is like taking a vow of poverty. You can't make enough money to actually do anything with it. You have enough to just exist. Like, I would cover basic human survival. But this guy makes no excuses, and he is hurt badly, and he's out here working hard uh, every day, and I just wanna say, I got tremendous respect for that, because that takes a lot. And when I see people that don't make excuses and don't identify themselves by their handicap, but instead are like, I'm gonna rise above this, I just, uh, yeah. Hello there. On this episode of Why Stuff Happens the Way It Does, I want to explain some stuff. All right, so <clears throat> when you paint, every paint these days comes with paint and primer in the same thing. Pretty much. I mean, I suppose you get some super cheap stuff, but we never do because we know what we're doing. Anyway, <clears throat> oftentimes you have to spray two coats of paint, okay? Especially on lighter colors. Now, this is because if you paint then sometimes there's shadows because there's a texture and stuff like that. And so when you paint the second time, hopefully that covers up um, where the shadows are and then you don't get streaks and runs and things like that, like how this looks right now. Now it's still drying, so don't judge too hard. This is the same thing that happens in our bodies, okay? Allow me to demonstrate. You got a guy and a girl and they each give a cell. I think we all know what these cells are. And when they do, then the chromosomes mix and the DNA mixes. And when that happens, imagine this. Imagine that you got, you're wearing a bathing suit. It's got some holes in it because over time, your ancestry has, I don't know, had some holes in it, okay? But then somebody else doesn't have the same holes as you. They got some holes too, but they're in different places. So when you wear both bathing suits at the same time, then your holes get covered up. It's kind of like this, okay? So that's important to know. Now, you don't want to be inbred because then the holes are in the same place and you end up looking like, you know, <laughs> like you've been touched. <laughs> so, <Too much>. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> apparently the internet hasn't figured out that you shouldn't do that either. Anyway, we're just bonding. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> so, 
here's some things that you never hear uh, very often, I, I think, is, uh, man, that guy weighs 478 pounds soaking wet, right? Like, at 478 pounds, like, does it matter if he's wet or not? Like, with, <laughs> with skinny, skinny girls, you're like, oh, man, she weighs 98 pounds soaking wet. You're like, okay, so that's, like, with everything you could put on her, she still only weighs 98 pounds. But when you're that big, you're kind of like, eh, I mean, whatever. Eat some cheeseburgers, it won't matter, right? So, now, a lot of people are mean. <laughs> Not me, other people are mean. But I feel bad, okay, and here's why. Because like, I'm ridiculously fat, and I already know that. People make fun of me constantly. I hear people like, hey, look at this stupid fat guy. And I'm like, oh, where is he? I don't wanna make fun of him too. And like, it's you, and then I cry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's sad, okay, it's sad. But when I see, because I'm about, what do you think, like 200 pounds overweight, something like that, roughly. And so, <clears throat> When I just sit, okay, or when I walk up a stair, one stair, with 200 pounds, over, overweight, like there's my normal body weight, like, oh, a normal human would feel like the effects of gravity. But with me being 200 pounds overweight, it's like I'm carrying two bundles of shingles, because those are 70 pounds each, right, so that's 140. Then a, a five gallon bucket of paint, that's another, what, 50? 60 pounds, something like that. Yeah, 50 pounds, so then, and I got another 10 pounds, so, and a gallon of milk, and maybe like a jar of peanut butter. Okay, so, imagine this. Mm. Two, yeah, two bundles of shingles, a uh, five gallon bucket of paint, a gallon of milk, and a thing of peanut butter. And I'm carrying that everywhere I go. Like I take one step, I'm like, I'm exhausted. This is too much. And then I think, you know what? I ought to lay off the ho-hos. But I don't, I don't. They're so good. They're delicious. I also thought about getting uh, butter and melted lard. <laughs> Putting that in an IV needle and getting it over with. Deep fried. Deep fried me. We're going to get back to pan. Oh, hey there. So, we've got Sylvester. Angel's over here. He doesn't want to talk to us because he said I'm ugly. And then, what did you say? You're beautiful. No, earlier, whenever I said I was ugly, you are like, John, let somebody else tell oh, you yeah. that you're ugly. No, but you said you were stupid. Oh, that's right, yeah. So I told you, don't don't call yourself stupid, let somebody else call you stupid. <laughs> somebody else call you stupid. <laughs> I think that's sweet. So don't base your life on somebody else's opinion either. Right? Which is it? Don't base your life, or don't, how is it? Don't live your life on somebody else's opinion. I wouldn't do that, no, I'm, okay. I'm way too, like, I'm just careless. You know how at the end of the day, maybe you got a bunch of clutter on your desktop? No. Uh -huh. I don't, I'm like this. Draw a big box, drag to trash, empty trash every day. Okay. Clean slate. Reset, right? Oh yeah, every day. They're like, how come you got room for jokes? I'm like, I save those in a separate folder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys did a beautiful job putting this metal roof up, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's black, which is like my soul. And also it's metal, <laughs> like my soul. Yeah. Now, what is the advantage to metal roof as opposed to composition roof? The lifespan. The lifespan. It's yeah. shorter lifespan? Long, longer lifespan. Longer lifespan, how long? I think we might go up to what? Uh, I mean, we've, we've done roofs that are 30 years old. Yeah. That are, they have rust on them, but they're still, you know, we just switch out the screws and. Tell me about switching out the screws. So let's just say. The sun eventually takes its toll on the gasket on the screws. Okay. So right. there's a gasket up there and then. And the screw in the middle. Right. And that will wear out. Right. But the roof isn't really worn out. No. And then you just take that out and put in a bigger screw. Yeah, put a bigger, a bigger wood screw. That's what we've done. And that's all you got to do. Yeah. You don't want to go with the same thickness of screw. Obviously, yeah. Cause then it's going to be walled out. Yeah. Right. You don't want to leak. So that's great. Uh, and then it looks beautiful, right? And then in Texas, we have a lot of hail. How does it hold up the hail? As long as it has decking. Yeah, which it does. What it does? Huh? It kind of absorbs the, the blow. The blow. Right. Which if it were if it were to have wood lads, yeah, they would get more. Yeah, you get more get dense. Gotcha. So, as is our habit, we were winded out because of the wind tour. Um, but we got a lot done and we're inching forward. I feel like we are like trying to conquer the mountain and every day we struggle and we fight and we're like, we gained four and a half feet. And you're like, you know, that's a mile up. I'm like, I don't care. We're moving forward. So we're gaining some stuff. All the roof is done. So we're in the dry and I'm very, very grateful for that. Now, Mike and Valerie and their family are beautiful, wonderful people and most people do not brag on themselves, and he's a very humble person, um, but I think this is a cool thing that they've done. So they wrote scriptures on 
they're doorposts, okay? So these are everywhere. This one says, um, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Okay, and that's in Joshua. And this came at a point in history where Joshua looked at all the people and he said, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether you serve the devil and demons and false gods or whether you serve the one true God. You choose, I don't care what you do, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, right? So I don't care what in the world that you do, I'm serving God, you guys can all do whatever. Y'all belong in a zoo. Um, <clears throat> so this reminds me that only dead fish go with the flow. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, the, whole, the whole current is going this way. And I'm like, that's the wrong way. They're all going over a cliff. Stop. Like, go against the flow and live. It matters. I heard, this is a true story. I heard that one day there was a flock of sheep. I think it was in Turkey. And one sheep was like, la-di-da, and went up to the edge of a cliff and fell right off. Fell down hundreds of feet, okay? A hundred feet, I don't know. Fell a long way to his death. Because sheep are followers, can you guess what happened, Jimmy? They also followed? How many? How many sheep followed this one sheep off the cliff? Probably all. 1,500. That's a lot. 1,500 sheep followed one dumb sheep off the cliff. Thank God the last 700 lived because it was such a fluffy mess at the bottom. That by that point, <laughs> they were just softly bouncing on pillows on their way to the bottom. They thought it was just a trampoline at that point. Yeah. Whee. Which used to be called a jumpling before your mom got on one. Exactly. No offense to your mom, she's a beautiful woman. That's just a joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 1,500 sheep followed one dumb sheep off of a cliff. And I wonder if at any point any of those sheep were like, is this the smartest thing I could do? I keep hearing sheep screams right on the other side of this. Bah, oh shit, <laughs> Maybe I won't do that. And I wonder if one of them like, go back, go back. And then, and then all the other ones are like, don't be stupid. And then they just went off, right? So I feel like, I feel like I'm fighting this battle a lot because I'm constantly looking around going, does everybody else see the same thing I see? Because I feel like we're falling off a cliff. And the rest of the world's like, just do what they say. Just do it. Just wear the stupid mask. I'm like, Get a shot, it's okay. I'm not gonna do that. It's dumb. I feel like- Everybody gonna... does it. Get you a shot. Yeah. Oh, take a jab. If everybody was jumping off of a cliff, would you do it? And you know, when my mom said this to me when I was younger, I was like, yeah, of course I would. I love jumping off cliffs, usually into water. <laughs> but nevertheless, I've jumped off a lot of other cliffs with bungee cords. I've even jumped out of some airplanes. Now people say, why would you want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? And anybody that's been skydiving knows. I want to do it so bad. They're not perfectly good airplanes. They are stripped down. You're like, <laughs> I feel scared in this plane like i'm probably safer out of it <laughs> the pilot is wearing a parachute no lie they're in the in the thing that is no lie the pilot that's and so i i filmed for a movie um i jumped but then somebody else was with me and they jumped on a separate time and so i was like can i come up and just film on the way down he's like yeah whatever so i was strapped in harnessed in whatever and i'm hanging out with the camera like looking down and what I didn't realize is it takes like 15 minutes to get up to altitude. You get up to 14,500 square or feet. So it's whatever, almost three miles. Not exactly. You're up there and then the people jump out and they just disappear. You're like, oh, <laughs> like a bunch of rocks. Um, but as soon this pilot knows, like my money's on the ground. And as soon as the last person jumps, it's just straight to the ground. I mean, it takes like 90 seconds to get to the ground. 15 minutes to get up and 90 seconds. And I'm like this, like, oh my goodness, that dude's for real. So not a perfectly good airplane because that dude is ready to jump out at any point. Yeah, no doubt. That, that is like, hey, remember when they stopped making these 32 years ago? And you're like, wait, what? Like, yeah, we got a deal on this. We got this on an auction, a Craigslist. I actually bought it from a go-kart dealer. And you're like, um, are we safe? And like, ah, oh, yeah, we're fine. Uh, Why are you wearing time. a parachute? Don't, don't think about that. Anyway, we're gonna come tomorrow. <laughs> Hopefully um, we won't get winded out and we can finish the paint outside. Um, real quick, um, we are getting, we're just doing little tiny minor touch-ups inside. And on Monday, uh, Billy Feaster's guys are supposed to come out and spray foam. So I, Billy and Sharon, I'm sorry. Their, their people are supposed to come out and spray foam and then sheetrock goes up and then tape and bend texture. And so this house that you've been seeing is about to be transformed and I'm so excited to see how it looks. But it's important that you got God all the way down to your bones. All right, see you guys in the morning. We'll be back. All right.
Oh, hey there. So it has come to my attention that we got a porta potty on this job and nobody has been flushing the toilet. <laughs> and I finally went in there because I take, you know, a number two about every three months. And mm. it was, Ugh. it was not pretty. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't have a smell of them for that one. Um, and so I called you out and then you're gonna put in a septic tank so we can actually deposit it. Start flushing the correct way. <laughs> right, get, get rid of it and, and actually flush the toilet. Let right? Mother Earth do the rest of the yeah. uh, work for yeah. you. Yeah, so you yeah. do septic tanks, what else do you do? We do septic tanks, we do framing, drywall, paint, texture. Awesome, and you do amazing work? I, I think so. <laughs> That's fair. And then how long does it take to do a septic system? About a day, day and a half at the most. That's not bad. And then um, you're affordable, I think. I, which, I think so too. Yeah, which <laughs> I think it's great. Now, did you know, a lot of people don't know this, whoever writes your autobiography will also be the person that takes all your selfies. Oh, well, my wife's stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so who takes your selfies? Because I've been looking for somebody, the guy taking my selfies sucks. Yeah. So do you have somebody that I could use? Who do you recommend? Well, I mean, hopefully you can take some because uh, no, I can't I'm not. Do it. I'm not good at that. I'm not. I'm not good on camera. I, I here's what I found that um, I break a lot of cameras not because I careless, but because of my face. You got a face for radio. Thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna go cry for a bit. There you go. Thanks for the second thing. <laughs> oh, good morning. <clears throat> so, once again, in Texas, it's cold. I realize it's winter time. I still feel like it's no excuse. It's disrespectful. This weather does not understand we got stuff to do. So we're doing what we can, but we can't feel our fingers and our toes or our nose and other extremities, whatever those may be. All right, so this morning, we're kind of tying up some loose ends because spray foam's coming soon, we're excited. We put in this island and wired that, <clears throat> so that's pretty exciting. We did some stuff over here on the fireplace, which is nice, and we've done some here and there things. Um, I'm playing an open mic tonight. If I don't have the sniffles, from being in this horrible weather all day. So if you guys wanna come out, then I'd love to see you. Now I wanna to talk to you guys about something. In Ezekiel 33, the other day we talked about the fact that um, God has made you a watchman. And then if you see the enemy coming and you don't blow the trumpet, ring the bell, then that's a problem. But the other part of that same chapter says this. It says, if a righteous man trusts in his righteousness, and then starts to do evil, God will not remember the righteous acts that he has done, and he will only remember the evil and he will die for it. And you're like, wait, hold on, wait, wait, what? Also, if a wicked person is doing evil, and then they repent of that, God will not remember the evil that they did. Now this is both wonderful and also awful, okay? It's wonderful if you realize, hey, I'm an evil person, I need to repent and turn from your wicked ways. Okay, that's the important thing. Anytime that the Bible talks about being saved, it's also about repentance, which repentance means you're going in one direction and you do a 180 degree turn the other direction. Okay, so when that happens, you stop doing the bad things and you start doing the good things. It's very important. So if you're doing the bad things, you realize like, I'm a horrible person you come into the presence of a holy God and you go, woe is me because I'm a man of unclean lips that lives among a people of unclean lips. And you realize like when I face judgment, it will not be good for me. And then you turn from that and you're like, I wanna do everything in my power to do what's right. God honors that. On the flip side, if you feel like I'm so good that I couldn't possibly go to hell, I'm just fine, like I got my ticket, and you're gonna do whatever in the world you wanna do. The Bible says you better watch out because that is when you're in danger. Yes. Usually pride comes before a fall, and if you feel like I'm so confident that I can do literally anything, I can do anything I want all six days, but on Sunday for an hour, I act like a decent person, yeah. and you think you're fooling God? Free pass. <laughs> you're not fooling God. On the flip side, if you feel like I'm just a horrible person, and you're like, but I want to repent, I want to do the right thing, you're in a good place. Follow through with that. Follow through with that, because there is hope for you. All right, there's hope for us too, because we're gonna try to get warm and also get some lunch, and hopefully I'll see you guys tonight. Love you, bye. Oh, sorry. Uh <laughs>
it's a little bit cold out here and in here because we're not insulated yet, but that's gonna be hopefully our next step. So we spent today doing some things. One of the things we did is put Tyvek down all over this floor. Now, the reason why is because we're gonna have, the concrete is gonna be just the concrete. There's not gonna be floor on top of it. And so you put the Tyvek down and that protects it from all the spray foam insulation, all the sheetrock dust, tape and bed, texture, paint, all that stuff. Once we do all that, then we'll cut it out and dispose of it properly. By that, I mean probably burn it in some black smoke heat. <laughs> <laughs> it will get frowned upon heavily by the EPA or put it in the landfill. Well, your choice. No, it doesn't matter. All right, now, Jimmy, Sir. you're pretty smart, right? Uh, I like the color. So that counts as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm wondering if, I, I was just thinking about this the other day. I'm wondering if everybody kind of has this moment of realization when they're young. Okay, so there was a point that I was thinking about the other day, which I hadn't thought about in a long time. And it was, <clears throat> I thought the world should be a certain way, okay? Mm -hmm. I thought that people should be good. I thought they should try to do the right thing. Yep. That the things that your parents told you, that people would act that way. They would try to like, you know, put God first and they would try to, they would do the right thing. Kind of no matter what, like they would try to be good people. Like it should be instilled in them, ingrained in them. Yes. And then there was a point when I was young that I realized people were not that. And I felt like disappointed and disillusioned with life. Sure. I felt unhappy and I felt like I'd been lied to and that if that's not the way the world is, then why even bother trying? Right. Did you ever feel like that? Yep. Do you feel like upon reviewing the tapes in your mind and upon further reflection that perhaps that's the point where you stop trying and you just started doing like, what difference does it make anyway what I do? Uh, not really. I still still think every little thing matters, but yeah, there was a time when I thought that, yeah. Right. I I can't pinpoint it because, you know, it's been a long time. I'm very old. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm older than you watch it. But I feel, barely. But I feel like that was the beginning of the end for me. Right. And that once I became disillusioned with life, once I became disillusioned with the fact that people were not being what I was told people should be. Right. Then I was like... <laughs> I think angry and hurt inside yep. and also just and disappointed yeah and just felt like if nobody else is doing it then why should i bother trying it yeah so what is my point to this story my point is this somebody is looking up to you some young person is looking up to you and they will probably never say this don't be the reason they're disappointed with life that's right don't be the reason that they're disillusioned, that they give up, that they stop trying, and that they just like decide to be a bad person. I made a conscious decision to be a bad person. I did. I was like, I'm going to do every bad thing. And I did. Now, since then, I've made a conscious decision to be a good person. Yep. I try real hard. I still don't think I'm a good person. I think I'm a person that wants to do good. That's, I want to. That's better I want to. not. Right. But my encouragement to you is don't be the parent that disillusions your child. Don't be the coworker or the teacher or the big brother or whatever in the world it is that you are to somebody that makes them give up. Don't be that person, right? Like be an encouragement, be a reason that they believe in humanity again. Be the reason that they believe in God, that they go, you know what? That guy does it and I wanna do it too that girl does it and I want to do it too. I want to be good because they're good and I see the results in their life and I want to be like that. So we're going to leave early today because we're kind of at a stopping point and we're frozen. Not hey, like man. the movie. Mm -mm. No, we're not going to sing anything. I might. Later on I will because I'm playing tonight at yes, open mic. Right. So if you want to come out, it's probably going to be horrible because it's a bit, it's probably like just a common COVID <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's COVID season, you know, it's so cold out here. And no, I, I'm sure I'll be fine. So I'll suffer through it. And if you guys want to come out there, then I'd love to see you. All right. Have a great I'll day. I'll be there. Oh, yay. All right. Bye. bye. Oh, <laughs> that's so embarrassing when you guys sneak up on me. I'm doing nothing as usual. So today it is 34 degrees, but with the sun shining and not being in the shadows right now, it feels like 35 degrees. So that's not so bad. Let me give you a poor example of how cold it is. The well water is 800 feet deep. So it's always 
ice cold. You're just like, oh, that chilly, nice water. No matter what, no matter what the surface of the earth is, it's 800 feet down. It's like, I do what I want. I'm gonna be cold. But when I was just cleaning out some stuff with all the well water, I was like, why does this well water feel so warm? <laughs> the answer is because it's freezing cold out here. That's what the answer is. Okay, so today, among other things, we painted the garage door black, and I think that's beautiful. We also got some lights up there um, on the front porch and um, did a bunch of kind of touch up little things that really make a big difference. Um, somebody a long time ago, somebody smarter than me, said sometimes it costs two or three times as much to get something maybe 15 or 20 percent better but that 15 or 20 percent better is worth it and at first i was like you're an idiot to pay that much and now i'm like but you know what they're right it takes a lot of time to make all the little details work out right and that's really what it is it's taking time and caring about it rather than just like rushing through which let's be honest i have a bit of a habit of doing all right so I saw this girl the other day and she was beautiful and so I wanted to give her a compliment because girls like compliments you know they need to be built up on their ego or whatever so I'm like you have such beautiful blonde hair but why do you dye your roots brown I don't know why I'm single oh. <laughs> uh, that was very embarrassing I normally don't sing I mean last night I did it was nice very Thank nice. you to everybody that came out. My thousands of fans. Jimmy was there. I was. Jimmy's wife was there. Yes, Allie was there. Allie. Lori Mosley showed up. That was really nice. Um, a lot of people were there and they were very receptive. And I was just like, wow, I want to do this again. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, so <clears throat> it occurred to me that maybe some of you don't understand everything in the world. Um, a lot of people ask me, like, John, how do you know so much stuff about so much stuff? And the answer is, I'm still trying to find something I'm good at. So I just keep trying and I learn more stuff along the way. And I'm like, hmm, good luck. All right, so um, maybe you have windows or doors and when you get close to them and there's a draft or it's cold, then you're like, ah, it's so cold. It makes my hands and my nose cold. Never fear. Part of the goal in life when you're building a house is to not have the weather outside be the same as the weather inside. You want it to be better. If it's hot outside, cold inside. If it's cold outside, hot inside. That's how we work. We're never happy with anything. We're people. So first, you saw we put uh, wind bracing OSB everywhere. That's important. That'll hold up against a lot of wind. Then we put Tyvek, house wrap, um, the same stuff that's on the floor. We put that all around the house. That is a vapor barrier, but it also keeps wind from going through and it lets the house breathe. Then you're like, aha, we'll have spray foam in all these walls and they will be filled with spray foam, which is beautiful. But what about around the windows and doors? Never fear. We put spray foam around there too. And then there's no, the wind is blowing like a monster. I don't feel anything. Look at that. My, I can feel my fingers, it's amazing. And my, yep, I can feel my nose. So that's good stuff. So you put spray foam around your windows and around your doors and around any penetration because that aids in keeping your house insulated and keeping it airtight. Cause you want that. Cause you wanna keep the bad weather outside. We're gonna need that whenever the apocalypse comes. The real apocalypse, not this garbage we've been dealing with for the last two years. The apocalypse. Okay, <clears throat> so I wanna tell you guys what I think is a cool story. Our pastor told this uh, several years back and I was so impressed with it, I'll tell you the rest in a minute. So, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he told this story and he showed this picture, right? There's a painting and this man is playing chess against the devil. I don't know what he wanted to get from the devil, but he wagered his soul and the devil has him in checkmate and the painting is called checkmate. And so he's got this look of agony, like oh. guess, guess who made a mistake? And the answer is like me, I wagered against the devil. And he's like, sucka, I only take bets I know I can win. And the devil's happy like this, like I'm about to take your soul to hell. Not a nice thing to do. No. Um, and the dude's like this, because he knows I done been beat. This sat in a museum for hundreds of years. True story, hundreds of years. Then this guy comes along who really appreciates art and happens to be an amazing chess player, like a award-winning chess player. Walking along, la-di-da, when all of a sudden, that's a cool painting, kind of like a Muppet would do, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> Not that cool painting. <laughs> so, 
So then he looks at the painting and he's like, huh. And he's, it's called Checkmate, right? So he's like, but is it? So he looks at it for a long time. He studies every possible scenario in his mind. He gets a chessboard, sets it up exactly like that. For hours, he agonizes over this. He's like, this guy's beat. And then he's like, wait a minute. The king has one more move. And if the, when the king makes that move, you can win. It changes everything. Like, you will win this game. You will have your soul. And I think that's miraculous, right? That this painting was like, hey, you're beat. And this guy was like, I'm beat. And he knew I've lost against the devil. But then somebody looked and went, but you haven't lost yet. And the king has one more move. And once he makes that move, it changes everything. So our pastor starts talking about it. He says, is there any time in the Bible when that's happened where it looks like the devil's won and he's wringing his hands and he's ready and he's like, mouth's watering. He's like, I'm fitting to get you. And then all of a sudden the king has one more move. He's like, oh, foiled again. And the answer is yes. The Bible is filled with those stories, filled they're, with them. They're called zoinkses. <laughs> I don't know if that's the technical <laughs> term, but the Bible is filled with stories like that. Um, for example, um, let's just take Jesus. Okay, so the devil's like, aha, I have killed the son of God. And now what, God? Ha, 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 I go. Oh, wow, he rose from the dead. And now he has become the... Oh, wow. He paid for everybody's souls. Hmm. Mwah, 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 mwah. Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty good example, right? Also, I mean, Daniel in the lion's den, David and Goliath. I mean, you can go on and on and on and Jonah on. Jonah in the whale. Jonah in the whale. Josie and mm -hmm. the pussycats. The last one is uh, debatable. Anyway, there are many, many examples throughout the Bible and through probably all of our lives. I know in mine, many, many, many where I'm like, not going to win this one. Might as well give up. But there comes a point. This, this actually happened to me. I was young, younger and stupider. I was helping somebody move and somebody turned a corner and when they did, the load shifted and I was dangling, right? I was hanging off like onto a dresser and my feet were dragging on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Not pleasant, right? Now, I could have just been like, oh, well, I lose this one and then and had, you know, like a different looking face. But instead, I'm like holding on for dear life, yelling like, no, 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 no. And then finally they did stop and I lived. So that's not a great example of how God redeemed us. But there are many times when you're like, I think I want to give up. Don't. Don't right. give up because the king has one more move. And this changes everything. So I think we're going to go see Saving Yesterday tonight because I love those guys. And I have lots of fun when I'm there. And they're playing at O'Shea's, I think. O'Shea's. In? Uh, Colleyville, Northwestern Hills. -ish. NRH. Perfect. NRH. Come out there and say hi to us and have fun. Love you too, bye.